The Keyhawks are back in the playoffs for the first time in two seasons. They'll head to Central City Friday night, chatting here with head coach Chad Winters. And coach, uh, last week, a talented Edco squad came to town. Uh, a long ball game, a lot of points uh, in that ball game. Uh, you've had your fair share of games like that uh, this year. Uh, Edco ended up winning in the end. Uh, what were the takeaways from your perspective? Um, offensively, you can't complain about scoring 50 points. Defensively, uh, a lot of things to fix. A lot of things to fix. Um, just couldn't get guys on the ground. Uh, too many, too many missed tackles, and, and they got some athletes in the in the backfield there. Um, don't don't get me wrong. They they got some tough tough kids. Uh, I, I think I think Don Bosco is going to have their hands full with with a full healthy Edco, uh, which we saw Friday night. Um, they took Central City to the buzzer earlier in the year. Um, lost to Lone Tree without without the Rochford kid playing talented group when they have everybody on the field and, and they showed that Friday night. We just, we just couldn't get stops on defense did all we could offensively, but a very frustrating night defensively. The fact that you though scored 50 points against a team like that on that side of the ball, does that uh, give you a little bit of a jolt of confidence heading into the postseason? Yeah, it, it's very encouraging. I mean, we, we know we got uh, a tough defense to stop, spread you out, um, can run throw, got, got some dynamic guys out on the field. Uh, makes life easier. Um, we just, we just have to do a better job of making sure that we capitalize on every situation. And we had, we had a first and goal on the, on the three yard line, had a penalty, ended up turning the ball over uh, a ball slipped out of Dalton's hands on a second down play when we, when he pump faked and they ended up recovering and just situations like that, that, yeah, you need to be able to punch it in, in those opportunities when you're playing against, playoff caliber teams and it's going to be no different Friday night when we go to Central City. And on the defensive side of the ball, you mentioned uh, tackling uh, being uh, one of the issues. Uh, anything particular uh, other than that, you need to uh, rough out the uh, or smooth out the rough edges uh, heading into the playoffs. I uh, just just being gap sound. There's there's a couple times where where we didn't fill, we didn't come downhill like we needed to. Uh, if we sit and wait Friday night, um, they got big dynamic backs. Uh, Typical playoff running backs is kind of what we call them. And, and those are the guys that you got to be able to consistently tackle. And, and we had problems doing that Friday night. So we, we need to get that cleaned up. Um, tough to, tough to practice tackling this time of the year, full speed, um, need everybody healthy that you can get. So, so that's kind of a, kind of a catch 22 situation for you. You, you got to try to work on it, but at the same time, you can't get guys beat up in the process of doing it. And you are back in the postseason. Uh, missed the postseason last year. You made a nice run uh, two years ago. And sometimes uh, with the expanded field and 32 teams getting in in your class, uh, I think sometimes we take the postseason for granted. Uh, it's something to be celebrated, correct? Oh, oh, most de most definitely. I mean, you're talking about the class that's by far the biggest. Um, you almost got 70 teams in playing eight-man football in the state of Iowa. Um, it's not like you're making – making the playoffs 32 out of 48 teams like some of the other classes have mm -hmm. um, no knock on them, but you look at some of the records and some of the other classes of some of the first round matchups. And, and there's a lot of teams that are two and six, three and five, four and four that are playing. And, and you look at eight man and you don't have that. I mean, you, you need to win, you need to win five games to give yourself an opportunity to get in the playoffs. And, and sometimes that's not enough. Um, so yeah, you, you don't want to undersell that fact. We qualified for the playoffs. We, we knew we had some quality teams in our district. Um, be interested to see how everything shakes out on Friday with our, how our district performs. And this week, uh, you do head to Central City, who's had a very solid season to this point. Uh, looking at them on film, what, what do you like about them? Uh, they they got a great team. I, I won't lie. They are uh, not a team that we're unfamiliar with. I think we've probably played them the last 10 years. Uh, Coach Myers does a great job with them. I know him very, very well. Good, good buddy. Um, we knew this group was going to be good for them. I mean, you could see that a lot of these kids had to play varsity football as freshmen and sophomores, and you could see the talent was there. They just hasn't hadn't physically matured into their bodies. Um, the consistency that you need to play with at the varsity level against good teams wasn't there. They took a big step forward last year, made it to the second round, got beat by a good Waco team. Their only blemish this year is to number one ranked uh, Winfield Mount Union, who's 
pretty, pretty dang mm-hmm. good. And I mean, it was a one score game. They, they lost by eight points early in the season, 44, 36. So they, they have a bunch of pieces that are, that are just real, real good football players. All right, uh, coach, hopefully, uh, we can have another conversation uh, next week. Uh, keep the kids uh, healthy. We wish best of luck in the trip down to Central City. Thanks, Darren. Chad Winters, head coach of the Keyhawks, Keyhawks in Central City this Friday night in the first round.